This video is going to show you a little bit more on how to work with viewports um, and also how to do uh, some basic dimensioning. Okay, um, I have a, a drawing open here. Okay, if you remember, I've got um, a viewport right there. I double clicked in it to make it active. I double click out to make it inactive. You can't see it because up here in layers, I turn off the viewport. Okay, what I would recommend is you, um, in all of your drawings, you have your viewports. Um, make sure by clicking on the viewport that it is on the viewport layer. And once you've done that, um, I recommend turning off the viewport layer, uh, just because then you see what it really looks like when you print. Okay, once you do that, you might decide, oh, I'm going to move these notes here. Um, M for move, and I'm going to move it closer because it kind of feels lost way down there. And it was deceiving with the viewport turned on because you didn't know that. Okay, so that's the first thing I would do is turn off the viewport. Again, you go up to to layer any any layer you want to turn off. Um, I like clicking on the layer to find out what layer it's on. Okay, so like if I click on, well, right now. All my viewports are turned off. Okay, I can see the sheet looks really good. If I go Z, Enter, A, Enter, I can zoom all. Sheet looks beautiful. Okay, if you turn on the viewport layer, you can see the viewports are here. Okay, um, sometimes it's good to keep them on while you're working so you know where they are, but then turn them off when you're done to kind of get a good preview of what it's going to print like. Um, if you want to turn off a different layer, it's the same thing. Let's just double click in here. And I'm in that viewport, you can tell, because I, when I move out of it, I'm, my cursor is gone, or my, my crosshairs is gone. If I click on this, this is on the wall layer. Okay, so that's, that's the layer I'd put it on. If I turn off the wall layer, all those lines would, would go away. Um, turn off the current layer. You know, you don't usually want to do that. That's why it gives you the error message, and you see that all the walls disappeared. Um, if I go back to wall layer, I can turn them back on. Okay, um, so that's that's something on uh, layers and turning your viewports on and off, which is a good thing to do. Um, let me go into the floor plan here and show how to dimension it. Okay, there's really kind of two different ways to do it. You can either dimension it in paper space or you can dimension it in model space. Um, if I dimension in paper space, I'm just going to click on a, on a corner, I'm going to click on a different corner, and I'm going to move out here, and there's a dimension. Okay, and it looks really good. This text size is correct. Um, what's really uh, painful in AutoCAD is that text and arrowheads and everything scale up or down. Okay, so if you dement, I'm going to go into the, my model space, and I can't really pick it because, I don't know, I guess I did pick it. Okay, so... I couldn't tell I was a model space because my viewport's turned off, but I'm in there. Let's just go ahead and um, turn on the viewport just so you can see this more clearly. I'm going to turn on my viewport. Viewport turn on. Now I can see it. Okay. Um, keep in mind if you zoomed way in and you double click and you don't, you're not sure if you're in or not, you can click this little tab here and toggle back and forth. Okay, and it tells you that. But I'm in model space right now. Again, I like to use this dimension and not that dimension. The reason is that this dimension will stay horizontal or vertical. That dimension doesn't. It rotates. So unless you need a rotated dimension, I would recommend you use that dimension. Dimension linear. Okay, so watch what happens if I click. Actually, it looks just the same, which surprised me. Because honestly, I never can predict what happens with dimensions. I would much prefer you dimension in um, model space and not in paper space because, actually I think I toggled, I think I am in, no, I'm in model space, okay, and I can tell because as I zoom in and out, this dimension is sticking with the building, this dimension isn't because this is out in paper space, and that is why you're better off dimensioning in model space. But sometimes when you dimension in model space, the, the text is teeny tiny and rather than try to have you figure out how to do that, um, I'd say just dimension and paper space. 
The problem with dimensioning in paper space is as you move your building in your viewport, your dimensions don't move with it and it becomes a pain. And let me show you what I mean. Um, if I take my hand and I move this around, okay, I can move what's back in paper space or in model space. The dimension stays there. This dimension is now bad. Okay, let's say I, re I want to put it up here. Okay, then this is a nightmare. Um, let me go into model space and show you what this looks like at the back of the back of the uh, kind of back of house here. Let's go model. If I go to that floor plan that I just added a dimension to, you can see that the dimension's right there. So knowing that that works, let's see if I can dimension everything else in here. I can. And what's nice is to you really want to line up dimensions. So if you go click and click, then your third click tells you where to put it. And if you come over here, you can snap it so it lines up perfectly with that three foot. Okay. Um, so again, I can go click, I can go click, and I can snap over here. See, and they look really good. You don't want to be random. Um, another tool you can use to run what's called a string of dimensions. Let's say I'm going to do another set of dimensions um, on the side here. So I'll dimension this three feet. Leave a little bit of space. Okay. If you click on this tool, it says continue dimensions. And what it'll do is it'll continue from your last dimension. And then it's really fast because you can just go click and click. And you could even go click here. Okay. You never want to click all the way to the end though. Um, and I'll show you why. I'm going to hit escape or uh, escape to get out of this tool. Let's do another dimension and I'll do an overall dimension from this point clear up to here. Okay, it's a good idea to have some overalls and then have some like detailed dimensions. The problem with this, which is called a closed string of dimensions, is that if, let's go to the hand so it's easier to show you what I'm talking about. If these numbers don't add up to that number, you've got a big problem because the builder will have to decide which one is correct. So you always want to leave an open, um, an open dimension in your string. I recommend you, you either pick the least important dimension, which is something that's just kind of um, leftover space, or you pick the longest dimension. Because if we have an eight foot dimension here, and it turns out to be off by an inch, it won't be the end of the world. If a three foot by three foot um, footing is an inch too small, it might be too weak and, and the building could have a big problem. Okay, so you have to make a judgment call. Um, I'm going to click this eight foot here and I'm going to just delete it. So this would be better than a closed string. Okay. So that's dimensioning. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Email me if you have a question.